This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org or the link in the episode description. A practical prayer is a prayer that works. These discussions between Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence dive into the details of how it works and how to work it. Reverend Bill is a New Thought minister and the author of Practical Prayer for Real Results. Your new life begins with a new thought. Carol Lawrence is on a spiritual quest, finding the New Thought teaching after decades on the pulpit in three different traditional denominations. I've got some questions. Together, they're exploring the philosophy and activities that come together from many of the world's religions to create the practical spirituality that is New Thought. Welcome to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol Lawrence, and I'm here with Reverend Bill Marcioni. And And before the podcast, we were chatting about the stuff that's been going on, and we've actually been doing this for a half a year now. I I can't believe it's a half year. The second conversation that I want to have with you Mm -hmm. is because you've been doing this this long, and you've been doing the deep dive on Mm -hmm. new thought and switching your perspective from what I will call old thought or old school God to new thought God, there are transformations that have been happening in your life Mm -hmm. because you're not just talking about this. You're actually doing the work and noticing the changes that are happening. And so one of the things that I want to talk about today is what are the transformations that have happened for you instead of being, let's talk theoretically about this to what happens when we rub the pieces together and (laughs) and things start to heat up. (laughs) (laughs) And <laughs> uh, you always have a perfect way of describing things. And <laughs> when you say when things heat up, that is so right. Yeah, they do heat up. Yeah. Um, and, and, and the other thing that you wanted to talk about, which we might get to or we'll interweave them, is as you have gone through this context change from a traditional religion and your old view of the divine, and you're still interacting with a lot of people who are in that space, but you have a new perspective. And how do you talk to them? And how do you work that? But let's do your trans- personal transformation first, and then we'll see if we okay. have time for the other one. Okay. So um, I would I would start at this point. This is something that you and I talk about every now and then. I identify, among other things, as a card carrying licensed control freak and I have always been that that way and I don't I mean just let's skip over the part that I'm the oldest and since I was the you know then since I was a child I had to do everything and make sure everything was in proper order and when dad died he said make sure this happens and he wouldn't you know don't give it to the youngest one give it to me so that's just my life it's just who I've been and I'm very comfortable with that Uh, And I think the term that I used when we were talking is that it has worked well for me until it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And um, in my former, (laughs) my former spiritual life, I guess, it it always did work well because there's so much to do that the small things that don't work, I could skip over that and just, you know, get on to the big things. And since I'm in charge, you know, eventually, usually it's going to go my way because I say so. So now I'm, getting to, I crossed over or I'm in, in new thought and it does not work well for me. And I'm okay with that. It's a struggle, but I, you have to want something new before it can happen. You have to be determined to want it no matter how high the heat gets or how push, pushed against the wall I am often. Mm-hmm. I refuse because I want this for me. So I said, okay, I'm giving up my control freak card. <laughs> and I always laugh and say, yeah, well, I tried to renew it and God won't let that happen. <laughs> Spirit, won't. <laughs> Spirit won't, you know, once you redeem it, that's done. So it's challenging, but you can't take something away from someone without giving them something to replace it with. That's true. So, and, and, and the first question that came to my mind, and it's the, uh, the, 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 the wacky one is, who issues the control freak cards? Because that person has some issues. <laughs> uh, you know that. 
<laughs> that, that's sort of like an unfair question because how do you know? You know, I, as far back as I can remember as a teeny thing, I was given the card. Yeah. And then you know, somebody so, gave to you. Yes. But. So, I mean, let's blame God, you know, in the in the old thought, old church uh, tradition, give blame God for everything. So, okay, so he gave me this card, right? So, yep. Blame God for the bad stuff. Blame God for the good stuff. Yes. And in our control freakedness, we can take credit or assign blame personally. Mm. The control freak thing works and perfectionism, control freak, it's all the same. Uh, it's the the notion that we are in control of what's going on in our lives and can fine tune and perfect it in some way. Now, Jesus, I think, gave us a hint as to what's going on when he said, it's not I, it's the father within who doeth the work, which means that if there is a control freak, it's the father within that is the control, the one in control. And our perfectionism and our activities of making things happen are the ways that we are engaging with that infinite power and presence and allowing, inviting and channeling mm -hmm. that creative power into our lives. So if we in our ego minds think that we're doing it, then it's actually the father within that's doing it. And we're fooling ourselves into thinking that it's us. Okay. So I agree with that, <laughs> but you know, I got to slow walk everything like one oh, step at a time. That's okay. So, that's how we've made it a half a year already. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then I know this, this is honest. Like this is not making this up. This is not hypo hypothetical. This is me in a, extremely difficult situation and a control freak will say, I can do this. I'll get out of, you know, I, because God will tell me what to do. And when it's done, and I'm, I'm honest about this, when it's done, I don't cheer. I don't think, wow, it's me. I think, okay, it turned out the way right because it was supposed to turn out right because I stuck with it until it did next. So what's next? Mm -hmm. And so that'll wear you completely out. Yep. I can tell you that. But with this change, I don't want it that way. You know, I want to, it's scary to say I'm not going to be in control. But then I'll say, you know, well, like God created this universe. Spirit created whoever you call it, whatever you call it, created all of this. So if I'm not in it at all, it's still going to go the way it's supposed to go. So I'll be in meditation. And I'll tell myself, you know, just center in. And you step back a bit. I know this is duality. I'm getting there, though. <laughs> you step back a bit and see what spirit brings to you, brings to your mind or brings um, in front of you. And it's interesting, the things that have come. So I think I share with you when we started things. Is, I did that. I stepped back. And when that thought or that intel, as I call it, came to me, I said, oh, no, no, that can't be it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was expecting you to work it out. You know, tell me how to work it out this way. Not this way. This is not cool, I don't think. But you got to want to go with it. You know? Yeah. There's an infinite creative power that creates everything, that knows everything. And some people say God is my co-pilot. And maybe it's more like we are God's co-pilot. Or... Maybe it's more like God is our autopilot because we're deciding where we want this plane to go. Mm -hmm. We're setting the course and, and putting in the destination. And then that infinite creative power is getting us there. And we don't have to grip tightly onto the controls for the entire trip. As long as we are willing to be open to whatever that newness is, we do that creative process where we acknowledge the infinite power and we that, and that, that it's within us. We set the intention for the direction that we want to go. And then in gratitude, we let go of the how. And then we look around and there's, we're coming up on our destination. Yeah, that is so scary. I think for a control freak, probably it's, it's scary. Yeah. And w w where does God want you to go? Where I want to go. Exactly. That's, God wants you to go through life. He wants you to do Carol as well as anybody can. And no one is better qualified than you. And there's not a, uh, there's no specifications on what that looks like in hindsight. And, and I like that, but I have to trust it. 
you know, because I have I have a control freak or me has a whole image or a picture of how this is supposed to go. I don't know whether I, I don't know where the heck I got the ideas from, but you know, I wake up and this is what I think this is supposed to happen <laughs> and how it's supposed to all turn out. And where I am at this very moment, um, I had to throw up my hands, actually, really honest and truly had to throw up my hands and say, okay, look, spirit, I'll give you a shot. <laughs> 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 like I thought you were telling me this all along, but apparently I'm missing something. So like, I'm going to give you a bigger shot, right? I'm going to step back further and further. And that is so scary. In a way it's scary, but I'm also curious because already I'm starting to see a different possibility. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, oh, gosh, I am too old to be coming up with new crap like this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the best time to make a change like this is 20 years ago. Yeah. And the second best time is today. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or 30 or 40 years ago. But uh, there, I, is there something in the word trust that I said to you? Is it helpful if you have the, that faith and that trust? Uh, the, nothing specifically that pinged me. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly what I meant because it's, I understand the concept of faith and trust, but I'm still working with, will, willingly working with step by step as situations occur, the oneness that I have or mm -hmm. that I am with God. I'm, you know, consciously, if, if it's not automatic, I'm consciously saying, wait a minute, where, where, is God is this? What are you saying? What is God saying? Or however it works out in the moment. And um, trusting that that next idea or that next step that I'm feeling or seeing is correct. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what I mean. Is it like cool to trust that much? Or do I need to run it through a couple tests first? It's yes and. It's yes to both. The still small voice of God whispers to us in, and sometimes says some wacky things and suggests courses of action that don't seem to make any sense to us. And in our control freak, perfectionist, ego-based self, we think we can figure out what to do next and we can come up with this next grand idea. And every once in a while, we think that one of our ego-based ideas is an inspiration and it's the divine speaking to us and it's telling us to do this completely wacky thing. And then we do it. And it turns out that it was not the still small voice. It was our ego doing an impression <laughs> of the still small voice. What I have found is that when that idea comes up to resist it, to say, that's an interesting new idea. That's something that I had not considered before. That is, could, could possibly be transformational, but maybe not because if it's our ego, it'll give up. Mm -hmm. But if it's the divine speaking to us, it'll, it'll come back again. It'll, you know, if, if it's a calling, it'll, it'll, God will call back and it'll be, become clearer and clearer as we resist it, that that's what's ours to do. And that's the, the, the next step to be taken. And that is completely paradoxical for a control freak. Yeah, it's and, and let me be clear that I did throw my hands up. And from from something that I was pretty absolutely sure about. And um, I just thought, well, first of all, it's wearing me out, even though I think it's right. It's wearing me to heck out. And that is doesn't seem to be consistent with what spirit would want to do. You know, it should be easier. It should be able to, Buddha talks about flowing, you know, like water, like there's nothing flowing here. <laughs> it mm -hmm. just seems, so as soon as I did, I started, as I said, I started seeing other possibilities and I was, I was shocked. I'm like, okay, that, yeah. Okay. But whoa, that means I got to learn a whole new set of whatever I got to learn. And so when has that had been, so when has that been a problem for you? You know, just, just slow down and just learn it. Just do it. It's, it's just, it's difficult making the transition from control freak to controlling, trusting. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, and it's not a whole new set of things that you need to learn, by the way. It's one thing you need to learn, and you need to keep on learning it at a deeper level. Mm -hmm. Let's take a break and come back and talk some more about that. Okay. Learn to put practical prayer to work in your life. The steps are simple to learn and let you begin to get real results to create the life of your dreams immediately. Reverend Bill Marcioni's widely acclaimed book, Practical Prayer for Real Results, gives you a clear summary of the new thought principles behind practical prayer and the series of easy-to-understand steps found in the most effective prayers from religions and spiritual practices all over the world and throughout history. Practical prayer is not a replacement for your religion or practice. It's a technique to make the work you do in consciousness even more effective. The book includes 40 prayers on various topics that you can adapt as needed and use as your own. Practical Prayer for Real Results is available in paperback, Kindle, and audiobook on Amazon or at b-the-light.com. That's b-the-light.com. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol Lawrence, and here with Reverend Bill Marcioni, we're going to continue our conversation. We're talking about the control freak and letting go of being a control freak. And when we're trying to muscle something, there's our experience in the world. There's the physical, and then there's the spiritual prototype or truth behind it, within it, around it. And sometimes when we're trying to make something happen on our control freak ego level, we're muscling things around in the physical world. And it works to an extent right up until, as you say, it doesn't work. So the story of yours that I'm going to retell is when your kids were little, you knew exactly what they were each going to be when they grew up. And you were, and I'm going to use the technical term, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the control, so wrong. The control freak in you got it wrong. I mean, not just a little bit wrong. It was completely wrong. Yes. And what was going to happen for them happened for them, regardless of your control freakiness. So the question is, how do you reconcile that? The fact that when they were younger, you knew. You absolutely knew that you knew that you knew. And then it turns out that you knew nothing. Mm -hmm. How does that fit in with the view of the world and the way this all works, that you could be so sure and be so wrong? Well, it, that's a fact. I mean, it happened that way. And um, I don't, I've often asked myself, how would I do it differently? I don't know how, I don't know how to, how I would have, but now I'm still their mom and I'm faced with three different people in three different places in their lives than I expected or thought or thought I saw. And so, you know, if they would just grow up and go away, I wouldn't have to worry about it. Like, you know, <laughs> God screwed it up, but I don't have to be faced with it. But they keep coming back and they're still with me. But now I get to practice a different way of being mom, a different, a new thought way of being yeah. mom. And it's, it's much better. For me, it's it's much more difficult for them, but it's helping them to make the transition, I suppose, that they should have made anyway. Or that they, they're, they're, they're able to make at whatever point that they're ready to make it. You can look at it and say, well, why did God let me do that or think that or believe that or push for that when it turns out that something else would be so much more helpful? Or you can look at it from the other perspective of this is the process that we've been through. And I've been able to transition and grow from that to this, to this, to what's next. And that's what God has in mind for us is that, that growth, that personal up leveling. Your kids would not be who they are if they had not gone through that experience with you thinking you were going to tell them who they are certain amount to push against. And that gives everybody the opportunity to come to their own sense and understanding of who, who am I right now? Mm -hmm. And what do I want to be next? And as you go through this change from being in the pulpit on different people's churches to having a new thought idea, you've still got contact with a lot of people 
who are willing to listen to you. And that's mm-hmm. a gift. And you wouldn't have had it if you hadn't been on that path, even if the path has brought to you to a place where you're not on the same page with those people. Mm-hmm. So it's all good. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's all good. Um, I've always been equally exposed in my work to with those who are in the Christian church, as well as those I call who are who don't find their place in organized religion, mm-hmm. you know, and especially that happened in the late 2000s. And, and then I was on a radio and I discovered not knowing, but I discovered that I could speak to those people as well. Well, they're easier to talk to than those in the Christian church. But when you let, let me just bring it closer to where it was using the story that you that you shared of mine, my children are used to the control freak. So they come back and want me to fix. Hmm. And you were right in the first place. We should have done such and such. And I'm saying, no, I was not right in the first place. Where we are right now is the right place to be. And this is how you move from this point forward. And they are at the point of kicking and screaming because they don't have a control freak fixing it for them. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm saying you can fix it for yourself because I taught you that God was within. The scripture says God is within. The scripture says it, right? Mm -hmm. And I said, but I didn't really teach it the right way. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) I'm confessing, right? I was just like, I I am a former Christian pastor. So anybody who's listening understands that is a difference. You can read Mm -hmm. the scripture and teach something else. Mm -hmm. Yes, so... I, I'm trying to tell them, here is the scripture and I'm showing it to you. It is exactly this. You know, you are the temple of the living God, which means he's in there living in you. It, he, whatever you want to call it. That's what you have to go with right now. I do not know. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to come as a shock to you, kids. I am not God. Well, <laughs> not exclusively. Yes. Yes. I get it. Yep. If your kids are coming to you because you're a great troubleshooter and problem solver, and you are suddenly going to look at the situations they're bringing and say, that's not a problem. That's an, that's an invitation for you to step into something different. So, Mm -hmm. and I'm not going to tell you what to do because there's a lot of different choices there. I can, I can listen to you. I can help you understand what those choices are, but I'm not going to tell you what to do because it's no longer, I'm not looking at it as a problem. I'm looking at it as a, as an opportunity as what's, you know, and what do you want to invite? What do you want to have happen? And this is this is the part that shuts the conversation down. They want to fight it, but they can't. I'll say, what have I always told you? This is not too hard for you. You can do this. So now here are some different tools to use. You do this. <laughs> and then there's and they no keep more coming time. around. Well, they, yeah, there's no more talking, but they <laughs> they keep going, they keep coming because, you know, I love them unconditionally, and that's what people do when you love them that way. This this is this is difficult, you know, but it's good. Like I said, you have to want to do it because if if there's a truth in what I believe is my work and my future and so forth, and my old ways. No disrespect, but my old ways are getting in the way. Then I have to get over it. I ha- I'm willing to knock those walls down. But you don't always know how difficult that is until you go to swing at, <laughs> swing at it, you know, and you get one wall down, there's another one. Yeah. And yeah. another and another. But there is another side to this. I know it is. It's yeah. Just, yeah. The second thing that we're going to talk about, which we'll just touch on a little bit, is how do you talk about the new thought God within with people who believe in an old thought God out in the sky, making decisions for us and punishing or rewarding us. Oh God, that's a long one. Mm. That's a really hard topic. And, Mm. and that's the one that's transformational. And that's to my way of thinking what you're going through right now, because you uh, have reformulated your understanding of spirit and it's not an event. It's a process. And you're far enough through the process that you're that you're getting distant from the the old way, and now you want to be able to talk to other people about the new way that you've discovered because it's true. It's mm-hmm. just it's you know you, 
once you have that and you've integrated it, you go back and look at the scripture that you've been reading all your life and say, oh, it doesn't mean what they taught me that it meant. And it doesn't even mean what I taught other people that it meant. It means what it actually says right there on the page. Mm -hmm. And I've often said, scripture is historical, metaphorical, and metaphysical, and they don't label which ones are which. Mm -hmm. But when there's a metaphysical truth that's in scripture, it just, once you're looking at it from a meta metaphysical perspective, it jumps out at you. Mm -hmm. It's hard to have that conversation with people who want to be able to blame God for the stuff that went wrong in their life. It is huge. It's a huge shift. And the way that you do it is that you be patient. You articulated it much better than I uh, could or whether I do it or not. Uh, you the will. way I speak it. But, <laughs> but, you know, for me, it's just, listen, this is what's on the page. Now, look at it from a different perspective. You know, it, it cannot be the way you thought or even the way I taught you. It cannot be that way because it's not working. So there must be another way, and don't be scared to look at it from another perspective. And can I tell a quick story? We got enough yeah. time, right? Okay. Yeah. So I'm dyslexic, and I'm also night blind. And the dyslexia goes in, includes directional dyslexia and all that business. So long story short, I don't really need to be driving at night because number one, I'm going to get lost, can't remember, whatever. So I use a GPS faithfully. So I, I moved uh, to an area where I was pastoring at one point, and um, I only knew one way home. And so I would get caught out at night often because of nighttime services. So I would go exactly that way, that route, count the lights, and I would be fine. If I had to make a right or a left turn, I was in a mess. So this one time, it was winter time, and there was a detour. Uh oh. And I said something that I'm not, you wouldn't say in church, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got to go through this detour. And I'm riding around, riding around, couldn't figure out. And I knew I had to be close. There was a house three quarters of the way down the street from where I lived. And it was that, it was a tour, a house that people would come in this, in the uh, wintertime because of the Christmas lights. It was a tourist attraction and all that business. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, that house is on the right. If I continue to go right with that house on the right, I'm going to be home. The detour rode me around. I don't know where the heck I was. I ended up with a house that had beautiful Christmas decorations, and it was on the left. And I said, well, that's not my house. That's not my landmark. <laughs> and so I'm over there, and I, I got so frustrated, I just pulled over, and I got out, and I walked. And I said, calm yourself down. You will get home. Just walk, and then get back in the car. When I got out and I walked to the corner, I realized that that was the house. I was on the side of it instead of the front. Mm -hmm. And the side of it, the decorations were different. And I never looked at it. I never saw the reindeers and all that stuff. I saw what was on the front. Too scared to turn the corner ever because I'd get lost. So I only, and because of that, I thought I was in a different place. Mm -hmm. And so I always use that example when I'm confused about something, turn the corner or go across the street and look at it from a different perspective. That's beautiful. And so I tell my children and those that are with me and want me to explain things, I know what it says and I know what I said, but now let's cross the street and see what it looks like from there. And so we're not getting rid of the house and we're not getting rid of the scripture. We're just looking at it from a different perspective. Now you can't, you can't not see when you do that. You can't not see. You can go back and look at it the way you want, you know, I could have, at that point, I had a new way home. I yep. knew that if, if it was on the right of me, I go this way. If the house is on the left, I go this way. I'm still dyslexic. I'm still night blind, but I can still get home. Perfect. So that's, I, I, that's what I do with them. That's you beautiful. Know? Yeah. And yeah. I don't know if you've ever gone to a, like a movie studio tour where they have the fronts of the buildings and there's nothing behind them. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> when you look at it from the street, it looks like New York. When you look at it from behind, it looks like a warehouse. Yeah. <laughs> and it's really easy sometimes to be fooled. And having that different perspective can really inform us. Let's make that be the prayer. Let's take a break and come back and do a prayer on changing our perspective. Okay. 
You can put practical prayer to work in your life, and Rev. Bill Marcioni can help. He is offering an online class that teaches you to create your own practical prayer in five weekly one-hour sessions. The final hour brings your practical prayer together, anchored in live original music by a notable New Thought musician. Practical prayer is based on the most effective prayers found in religions and spiritual practices all over the world. Use it to deepen ever more fully into the truth of your spiritual nature. It's the core of a transformational spiritual practice that's simple, even if it's not always easy. Reverend Bill is also available for private spiritual counseling prayer sessions. Together, you'll lean into the challenges you've experienced in life and explore the transformation that's possible through practical prayer. He'll uncover old, hidden beliefs and uproot them to make way for the life of your dreams. Everything you need to know is on the website at b-v-light.com. That's b-v-light.com. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol Lawrence here with Reverend Bill Marcioni. We've had a fabulous discussion today. So um, let's, you said we would pray about changing our perspective. Changing our perspective. Because the, the universe is what the universe is. And the experience that we're having in the world is the way that we, as divine expressions of the infinite, are interacting with the other divine expressions of the infinite. And we can easily make the mistake that the way it's going to work today is the way that it worked yesterday or every day in the past. And the fact of the matter is, there's a creative principle that has created everything. And at some point, there were no people. There were dinosaurs. And at some point, there were no dinosaurs. They hadn't shown up yet. And at some point, there was only darkness and void. And everything has been added to that. So instead of thinking that everything is static and everything is going to stay the way it's been we are free to look at it from a different perspective and from that vantage point invite a new understanding or even a new experience because that creative power is going to create something new and it doesn't have to create it according to the old recipe we can create with a new recipe so we'll take that into prayer and allow ourselves to invite a different perspective, a different awareness of how we engage with the universe, with the world around us, with the people and the experiences and the jobs and the health and all the rest of that, to invite that to unfold in a different way. Principle is not bound by precedent. Principle is creative and it's responding to intention and it can create something brand new that we have never seen before. And it can continue to create what it's been creating in a way that is harmonious and rich and joyous and powerful and sweet for us because it doesn't have to go away. It doesn't have to be different. Mm. So let's open ourselves to the awareness of that divine creative power, that infinite presence that has shared itself as and through and in every part of its creation. Call it God, call it nature, call it spirit, call it the Big Bang, whatever it is. It's that creative source from which everything is flowing. In the beginning, darkness and void, God. There, there was God and nothing else. And then God said, let there be. And the light and everything else came into being. And it had no place to come from but God. All of the energy, all of the matter, all of the intelligence, all of the love that's everywhere, that's everything, is God itself expressed in its own way. There is nothing but that divine presence. And knowing this, I know that God is not out there somewhere because God is everything that exists. And that includes me. That includes everyone who is listening to this prayer. We are all that divine presence in our own individual and unique and particular form. We are each thinking with that same mind. That infinite intelligence is the intelligence which we're using. That love, that creative expression is not just available for us. It is what we are. 
and we are able to make conscious choices and to allow that creative power to create something new. And we can do the same thing that we've always done, or we can do something new and different. We can step outside of our previous experience and invite something new, create something new, be in a different experience than we have been previously. There is no limit to what is available to us. If there is any limitation to what we can see, that's the invitation to look at it with a different perspective, to see the same things in a different way, to take the high watch, to look at it from a higher perspective. If this were unfolding in a way that were more joyous, more harmonious, more healthy, more loving, more creative, more spiritual, for me, what might that look like? And instead of defining what it'll look like, open ourselves up to new possibilities and look and allow ourselves to see from that different perspective, to see the world afresh. What is possible for me? And with that different perspective, to be able to choose with these new ideas, these new possibilities, what is going to unfold as the highest and best for me and for everybody else involved. And invite that. Set the intention for that good to flow into our lives. We don't need to specify exactly how it's going to happen or exactly what it's going to look like once it's showed up. Generally, how do I want to experience my life? What do I want to be feeling? Who do I want to be with? How do I want that to uplift me? Let go of the details and invite the big picture and set that intention and then allow the infinite to create that. So I know that that good is on the way for each of us, that ability to look with a different perspective, that ability to invite something new is already active in us. And each of us is choosing well, setting clear and powerful and positive intentions, inviting the infinite to create something new and wonderful. And it's already happening. And I'm so grateful for it. I'm grateful for the wonderful ways that it's happening for each of us. I'm grateful for the confidence that comes from going through this creative cycle to suspect that it works, to see that it works, to know that it works, and to absolutely faithfully believe that it works. We're on that path now. I'm grateful for all of this good, and I'm grateful to be able to speak this word of intention into that same creative law, which has created everything, and invited to create this. And it's happening now. And so I let it be. I know it's so, and so it is. So it is. That was great. I like that. Yes. The Practical Prayer Podcast with Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence is a production of Be the Light.com. Be dash the dash light. Dot com, where you can find more information about practical prayer for real results. Our theme is by Music of Wisdom. You can learn about the spiritual community of New Thought Philadelphia with daily guided meditations, weekly celebrations of spirit, and Reverend Bill's classes in practical spirituality at newthoughtphilly.org. This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org or the link in the episode description.